please all rise. Let us pray. O God, who by the passion of Christ, your Son, our Lord, abolished the death inherited from ancient sin, by every succeeding generation, grant that just as being conformed to Him, we have borne by the law of nature, the image of man on earth, so by the sanctification of grace we may bear the image of man of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Isaiah's mysterious suffering servant prefigures our Lord Jesus who bears our infirmities and is crushed for our sins. But by his chastisement, we are healed. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance, and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see, those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away, and who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living, and smitten for the sin of the people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked, and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life an as, of, as an offering for his sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. 
Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus agonizes at the prospect of his suffering and death. But out of his deep reverence for the Father, he accepts his passion and gains salvation for us. Because he knows our experience of weakness, pain, and suffering, Jesus becomes our gentle and sympathetic intercessor before the Father. The second reading. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what we suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all rise. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let this man go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off 
his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now, the other disciple was known to the high priest and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, Know this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now, the slaves and guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there, keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gathered. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now, Simon Peter was standing there, keeping warm. And they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. That is in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? 
Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not there, is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas! Now, Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold, the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. From this reason, the one who handed me over to you has a greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king! They cried out, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. 
it read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now, many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for him to see whose it will be. That is in order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus, where his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Please kneel for a few moments of prayer. Please all rise. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately, Blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. 
And again another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now, in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, the first day of the Paschal Triduum, we focused our reflection on the Last Supper and institution of the Holy Eucharist. We reflected together on the bread broken and given to us as the body of Christ. Yesterday, we were invited to befriend our brokenness as our way of passing through and crossing over with Jesus. Today, on the second day of our Paschal Triduum, we will focus on the blood of the Lamb that was poured out on the cross. Yes, the blood and the cross are essential to passing through and crossing over. Ang dugo, kag ang krus, kinahanglan para sa pagtabok kaupod kay Kristo. One ancient church father, St. John Chrysostom, writes, and I quote, Extraordinary things were accomplished by God during this day. We are reminded that this day are, is a holy day. This day is a day of grace. Good Friday will be a day when God will accomplish once more extraordinary things in our lives. Amuna gani nga ginatawag nga sa Tagalog nga mahal mahal na araw sapagkat biniyayaan tayo ng walang hanggang kaligtasan sa pamamagitan ng pag-aalay ng buhay ng ating Panginoon sa sangkatauhan upang tayong lahat ay matubos at maligtas sa kasalanan. Mahal na araw, Good Friday, sapagkat napakamahal at walang katumbas na pera, yaman, titulo, sakripisyo, at salapi ang pag-aalay na ginawa ng Diyos na ibinigay niya ang kanyang pinakamamahal na anak, nag-iisang anak at bugtong na anak para sa ating lahat. The church then invites us not to miss out on this moment of grace because many times we are so concerned about 
external rituals and practices. We are often so worried about what I can do for God today or what I can offer to God today to reciprocate or give back His goodness to me. We are so preoccupied with fasting, abstinence, charity works, way of the cross, visita iglesia, excessive penances, mortifications. Some would flagellate their bodies and have themselves nailed to the cross as if abe sila si Jesus, as if abe nga kayagid nila ang ginhimo ni Jesus. Which is not necessary and not encouraged because we have been redeemed by Christ already. Nga ang magpalansang ka pa sa krus. Please don't get me wrong. These are good practices as we observe Lenten season. But let us be reminded that it is not about us. It is not about our practices. It is about God's compassion and mercy. Today is Good Friday. Let us direct our thoughts instead of thinking about what we can do for God, but rather what God is doing for you and for me. During this Good Friday, our reflection should focus on what God has done and continuously doing for us and in us. Brothers and sisters, if you are not yet convinced how Jesus loves you, if you, can, if you still cannot feel Jesus' sacrifices for you, let us go back to the passion narrative. Jesus said, I thirst. And so the soldiers put a sponge soaked in wine and put it into his mouth. Wow! Kasosyal, no? Sponge. Kay wala pa siguro bottled water and straw during the time of Jesus. Amuna, sponge na lang. But what was the sponge doing there? Where did the sponge come from? The sponge during their time was used to clean their butt. The sponge was used to clean their puet, their bully, after they defecated, after they poop. The sponge was used to clean their butt. And that is how Jesus loves you and me. Ging subo niya, ging kao niya ang tae. Jesus literally ate human waste for the love of you and me. Normally, nibala, we give the best to the people or to the person we love before the person dies. We give the best food the gospel narrative says Jesus is, is about to die. And what we gave is not the best food. It's not the best drink. We gave human dirt. Ta'e. Today's liturgy reminds us that God has accomplished the greatest love of all on the cross for you and me. That is why I kept on repeating 
our penances, our sacrifices, it's nothing. Jesus suffered and died on the cross to save us from possible death and condemnation because we can never be good enough on our own. Biskan, magpapilas pa kita. We can never good enough. In John 13, 36, verse 37, Peter asked the Lord, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus said, Where am I going? You cannot follow now. Why? Because not even Peter can do it. Not even the Pope, not even cardinals, bishops, priests, and deacons, and all of us can do it. Today, brothers and sisters, we are reminded that there are many things in our lives that only God can accomplish for us. Why? Because we can never be good enough on our own. With all our intelligence, with all our talents and skills that we have, Jesus is the only one who can do it. Jesus is the only one who can say, it is finished. Only Jesus can say, mission accomplished. I have finished what I have set out to do. Brothers and sisters, many of us go through life leaving behind a path of unfinished business, shattered dreams, unfinished projects, unresolved conflicts, troubled relationships, and incomplete undertakings. We do have frustrations and disappointments, and we wish we could go back and set them right. But only God in Jesus Christ can accomplish this for us. Only Jesus can complete, satisfy, and perfect us. Today, let us acknowledge that we can only do so much. After all, it is the blood of the Lamb. It is the blood of Jesus which will complete and make us whole. It is the blood of the Lamb and the cross that will make us cross over and pass through. Today is the holiest day of the week, Mahal na Araw, because of the power of the Lamb's blood, because of the power of the cross. Good Friday, is all about what God in Jesus Christ has done and continuously accomplished for us. Amen. Please all rise. In the celebration of the word, we have been made aware that Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, offered himself for all men and women. Dying on the cross, he drew and united to himself all peoples. Let us now bring before the Father the needs of the church and the needs of all men and women in the world. For the Holy Church, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her, and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Please all kneel.
please all rise. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout the whole world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name, through Christ our Lord. For the Pope, let us pray also for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's Holy Church to govern the holy people of God. Please all kneel. Please all rise. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness, protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by your their Maker may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For all orders and degrees of the faithful, let us pray also for our Bishop Patricia Buzon, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Please all kneel. Please all rise. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose Spirit in the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For catechumens, let us pray also for catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of His mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rivers, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Please all kneel. Please all rise. Almighty ever living God, who make your church ever fruitful with your new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that reborn in font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. for the unity of Christians. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Please all kneel.
please all rise. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the band of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Jewish people, let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord God spoke first that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Please all kneel. Please all rise. Almighty ever living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, hear graciously the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. For those who do not believe in Christ, let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Please all kneel. Please all rise. Almighty ever living God, grant that those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in God, let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Please all kneel. Please all rise. Almighty ever living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in public office, let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Please all need.
please all rise. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lie every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may thoroughly through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in tribulation, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that He may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Please all kneel. Please all rise. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The second part of our celebration is the adoration of the Holy Cross. We shall now venerate the cross of Jesus from being a symbol of cruelty and shame. The tree of the Holy Cross now stands for the salvation of the world because of what Jesus suffered. Please all kneel. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore.
Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the Lord. Come, let us adore. Please be seated.
for the veneration of the Holy Cross, the Eucharistic ministers and also the altar servers no, will venerate. And then afterwards, no, we will continue no, with the veneration after the communion service. No, we have to finish no, the whole celebration. No, and then after that, everybody no, will also no, venerate. Okay? And according to the instruction, you have to genuflect or bow your heads. You may kiss if you want, no, but let us also be aware that there is already an outbreak, the pertosis, a whooping cup that is already in Iloilo and also in Balayan, Batangas and other provinces. So please, no, let us not spread virus again. So to show your reverence to the Holy Cross, you can just bow your heads and genuflect in front of the crucifix. And that is more than enough for Jesus. Thank you so much for your understanding. The third part of our celebration is the Holy Communion. Please all rise. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. all need. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen.
please all rise. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking at this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. During the veneration of the Holy Cross, we will put collection basket or collection box that is our yearly contribution no, para sa Holy Land. Hindi gidna makadto sa mga sisters. Ang tanan nga makuha naton sa collection, dalon naton sa chancery. Kag tanan nga simbahan, tipunon gidna. No, and then the bishop, the chancery, of the Diocese of Bacolod will send it to the Holy Father and the Holy Father will give it to the Holy Land. Once a year lang kita gaamot para ma-maintain natin ang Holy Land. So please, no, give something no, to be able also to help and support Holy Land. Tomorrow, we will continue with our Paschal Triduum and we will reflect on the importance of water as part of the crossing over. Bow your heads for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection, may pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.